What? I can't explain why it took me this long. <laughs> Star Wars. Hey guys, this is my review for Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. And you may be asking why it took me this long. I honestly can't give you a solid reason. I think maybe one thing that I've been kind of holding off on is my review of this film. Just actually putting my emotions into words about this film. I'll admit maybe I was a bit too harsh on the first one, The Phantom Menace, but honestly guys, I can't watch that movie in full without falling asleep. I've tried four times over the years. Attack of the Clones is a absolute mess in terms of the story, the acting, the writing, but at least it's kind of so bad it's good on a level. Revenge of the Sith kind of falls into that category, but at the same time, it's also not a bad movie in terms of entertainment value. This is arguably the best film in the trilogy. I, I don't think there's really any disputing that. It has the fastest pacing. It has the best pacing. It has the best character moments. It has some of the best fights in the film. It has some of the best uh, grandiose stages. Is it hammy throughout pretty much the whole goddamn film? Oh, no doubt. It doesn't even wait long, really. Within the first fight scene between Obi, Anakin, and Dooku, at the end of that, when Palpatine's just like, do it! At this point, Lucas had done such a kind of a poor job of building up the Emperor as a hidden villain. Like in the first film, as Red Letter Media has pointed out, it makes no goddamn sense. His plan made no sense. He was self-sabotaging himself the whole fucking time, as well as setting himself up to go in a completely different direction. In Attack of the Clones, it's kind of hinted, like maybe very barely, if at all. And then in the third one, it's like, yeah, He's the bad guy. I remember playing the video game before I went and saw the film, and I remember th getting to the point where you actually had to fight Mace Windu and thinking, oh wow, the Emperor's been bad this whole time? Yeah, not the smartest of kids, but I was, what, 14 when this movie came out, 15. So then when the movie starts, and then the Emperor says, do it, it's like, wow, you, you yeah, he's the bad guy. Now, kind of going back to the bad writing, the bad dialogue, it's very bad in this. There's some parts of the film that make me cringe, particularly the lovey-dovey scene between Anakin Skywalker and Padme. Like, I know it's because I am so in love with you. <laughs> but I'm gonna give the actors a bit of credit because at this point, Lucas did not like the idea of a physical realm at all. Everything in this film is green screened and he is not very good at putting the actors into a realm of where they can figure out what they're doing. Like Ewan McGregor is basically carrying the movie on his goddamn back, but he's also sharing the load with John Williams. John Williams has probably one of the best scores of the entire Star Wars trilogy in this film. It's bombastic, it's constant, it is lifting you up when the whole film otherwise should be bringing you down. It is a spectacle. Is it a good spectacle? Not all the time. Is it an entertaining spectacle? God damn yes it is. From the opening battle in Coruscant to the weird bike slash doop -boop 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 lizard dog chase on Utapau to the obvious big big climax fight on Mustafar, there's never a moment where you're not ooh, at what's going on in the film. There's always a great visual representation, and the fact that this film came out in 2005, I'm still blown away by how good this movie looks. Give Lucasfilms credit, because by God, they did a great job with keeping the CG and the VFX to hold strong. It beats some movies nowadays still. but. Does the film work in terms of an actual well-structured film? Yes and no. The build-up to Anakin Skywalker becoming bad has been done decently. It's not done the best, admittedly, but it's at least built up to this moment. We understand why he's going in this direction, especially with the idea of trying to save Padme and the Emperor obviously being like, hey, I can save your lady. You just gotta kind of listen to me. And I'll admit, I always get hyped up when Mace goes to confront the Emperor. Because this is kind of like those moments in films like Romeo and Juliet or the ending of the Titanic. Wow, those are some freaking sappy ass examples. But more so movies that you know what's going to happen, but you still dread it. You still go, oh no, maybe it'll be different this time, even though you know it won't be. Every time 
Anakin goes to confront the Emperor, to confront uh, Mace Windu. I always get this feeling of maybe it'll be different this time. Maybe Anakin just won't be a little stupid, manipulative bitch. I like that. I enjoy that I still get that sense of dread and worry and anxiety from a movie that I've watched countless times in the last 15 years. Admittedly afterwards though, it jumps the gun a bit because he goes from, what have I done? I just killed the only black guy in this entire Star Wars universe to then full on child murder. He doesn't even get a progression meter. He just jumps over to child slaughter. Like he makes the warlords of Sierra Leone and whatnot look like jump change in comparison. So I always find that this part, it's, it's, it's asking a lot. And considering the Emperor says, I don't even really know how to beat death either, but maybe we'll figure it out together. It's like, man, if I had been Anakin and been like, whoa, whoa, I just murdered a man for something that you were lying to me about, I'm gonna kill you too. Which is why I actually really enjoy the evil or the dark side ending of the Revenge of the Sith video game where after you kill Obi-Wan, you also kill the Emperor. And honestly, I think that's what would have happened too, actually, had they you know, had it gone a different way, that was the possible ending. I think that was Anakin's plan had he not, you know, gone all whole choke a bitch on Padme and been cut to pieces by Obi-Wan. That fight scene, as absolutely over dramatic as it is, it's still really cool to watch. It's fun, it has great choreography, overly flashy choreography, yes, but it's still really fun, and John Williams' score is just banging it at you. It's not as good as Duel of the Fates. He kind of hit gold with that one. So he just kind of goes to the silver mine and just bangs out some pretty damn good silver <laughs> with this score. I enjoy Revenge of the Sith. It has a lot of narrative problems in terms of the writing. The story does take a bit of a jump in terms of how much you're asking the audience to believe when Anakin goes from, you know, accidentally killing Mace Windu out of accidental protection for Padme to full-on murdering a bunch of children and then still kind of thinking he's the good guy to some really sappy ass dialogue but in terms of a spectacle it's the best one of the prequels. I could re-watch Revenge of the Sith far more than Rise of Skywalker and that's not just a, 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 a fuck you to the new trilogy. I'm just legitimately saying that Revenge of the Sith is a better structured film than Rise of Skywalker. At least it has a purpose. It actually has a script that, while bad in certain places, does make sense all the way through, whereas Rise of the Skywalker is just a bunch of studio executives changing a bunch of shit and trying to appease a fan base that they pissed off well, well too long ago. But anyways, I enjoy Revenge of the Sith. It's definitely one of the funnest films to watch in the entire saga. It is one of my favorite ones to watch. It's not one of the best ones, but it is one of my favorite ones to view because I get a kick out of watching it every goddamn time. Anyways, I'm going to give Revenge of the Sith a 4 out of 7. Oh man, I was aiming for a 3 for so goddamn long, but I can't deny how many times I've watched this movie. And it's not just because I'm a Star Wars nerd. It's actually just that enjoyable. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, what's another trilogy that I haven't finished? Um, oh well, I guess I could continue on with this one, but... Uh, oh man, the, the Fast and the Furious movies are on Netflix! I can watch the fourth one now! Anyways, that's all from me. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. You're probably wondering who I am. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. You know, Nitz, you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors. Yeah, guy. Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. <laughs> By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well, couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural, or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy, get in with the ladies, guy. Hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy, you're a massive slug thing, guy. <sighs> To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. 
And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.